Song, <clears throat> Song of Solomon. Uh, historically, this book is Solomon and his wife. Which one, we don't know. Practical, it's about marriage. Spiritual, it's about Christ in the church. Now the songs in the Bible are Moses, Exodus 15, Deborah, Judges 5, Jeremiah, the book of Lamentations, David, and then we have Solomon. Um, it's a book of expression of marital love ordained by God. It is pure, it is right, and it's holy. I know one person who would say he never read the book of Solomon because it was disgusting. I guess he can never say that he read the Bible all the way through. Now, are we going to read all the words? Why not? The Bible speaks of all the words of the Lord are pure. You mean I'm going to skip out reading a, a particular word in the Bible where there are so much filthy and cursing words that are allowed to be said? I wouldn't skip out on any word of the, of the Bible. No matter what kind of audience that we have. Well, we got children, they're listening to children in the congregation. You know what they go home and their parents let them listen to? And you think the Bible is going to be out cursed and out wrong and out evil and out sinful than, than television and, and, and movies? Come on. Now, the Song of Songs, 1 Kings 4.32, which is Solomon's. There's the author. So we are in another book of Solomon. The book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. Um, Proverbs, knowledge and wisdom and understanding as a person who is loving God. How not to be in your life. Ecclesiastes would be a book of just looking at the, the earth and living to death. Song of Solomon, love. And I hope I give to the Lord Jesus Christ all the credit that's due to him through this book. And I repent if I don't. Eight chapters we got in this book. So the author. Solomon is a type of Jesus Christ. The wife is a type of the church. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. When the bride speaks, let him, Solomon, kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than wine. Ephesians 5.18 Be ye filled with the Spirit, not excess of wine. So let it come. There's more wine and love in America. Some will give women drink just to fulfill their lust, not love. So the love of Jesus Christ is far better than any wine. And yet, when we take the Lord's Supper, we drink the, the new blood, the new wine. The great Jews, the pure blood of the great, as symbolic of the blood of Christ that was shed for our sins. It is that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him. The Acts 20:28 20, says that that blood that was shed, that sinless blood of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, was God's blood. So wine and love are together upon the sacrifice of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross. 
because of the Savior. 2 Corinthians 2.15 Of thy good ointments, thy name, name is above all names, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Acts 4.12 There is no other name given among men whereby ye must be saved. We haven't gotten three verses of this book yet. And look at all the Lord Jesus Christ. As ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. We are called chaste virgins. We're not called virgins. We're called virgins. Those ten virgins that Jesus speaks. That's not the church. The church is spoken of as singular. So here would be the nation of Israel, the virgins, word of bride. According to chapter 3, Jesus smells good. Imagine just before we're raptured, we get a little smell of Jesus before we see him. What is that smell? It's Jesus. Draw. See, no. Hosea eleven four, John six forty four, John twelve twenty two. Repentance. Draw me. Bride. Draw me. We. Me singular. We plural. will run after thee. Now, when Christ comes to the church, we're going to fly after him. When Christ comes for Israel, he's going to come up through the king's highway, through Salopetra, and pick up the Jew. He'll probably run through into the promised land like they did through Joshua and, and, and uh, Moses. The king. The king. Christ has really never spoken of king to the, to the church. He's spoken as Savior, Son of God, the, the husband, the lamb. The king of kings is when he comes back to, for Israel. The king of Nazareth, the king of the Jews was the title Put upon his cross to the Jew. If that's not a kick in the pants, Rome telling the Jews, there's your king. Has brought me into his chambers. His home. Chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. You want to be happy? You want to be rejoicing? Get in Christ. If you're outside of Christ, you're going to have torments being tormented in torments. Being tormenting. Forever. An eternal fire, lake of fire. For rejecting Christ as your Savior. Get in Christ. Receive him as your Savior. We will remember thy love. So what is the what is the Lord's Supper for the Christian? Do we do this in remembrance? Of what? Of what he's done for us? The gospel, how he well first of all, first part of the gospel is that he was you know he was uh, uh, beaten, bruised, Isaiah 53. And then the gospel, how he died for our sins, was buried and arose again. Isaiah 53, before the gospel. And then the gospel, remember what he's done for, for us, for me. And then remember that he's coming back. Titus 2.13 Remember thy love. Remember what Christ has done. You know what the Holy Spirit has said to comfort and to, come, to bring you into remembrance of the things of Christ and the words of Christ? How's that for a memory? Don't ever forget that. 
more than wine. He's better than wine, and you're to remember his love more than wine. Remember his love and for thy love. I say that's pretty safe, sure to say, for a Christian not to drink. You step in, drink in front of the love and and the and the, the remembrance of the. You can't remember the Lord if you're drunk. You're gonna want the love of God better than wine. The upright, John three eighteen and Acts chapter ten, love thee. Cornelius love. The Ethiopian, the Ethiop, Ethiopian eunuch. The man who became Paul loved. A young man grew up with, with, with Paul. Timothy loved. I love the Lord. I ain't perfect. I'm upright in Christ. My righteousness is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I love him. I am black. Oh. Not a very good color. Darkness. God is light. You know who I was before God shined his light in my I was in darkness. You couldn't tell what color. You know, when you're going down the road, because I've worked third shift all my life, if a guy were to tell you the house you're delivering to is a red house, you don't see color at night. There's only two shades of color you see at night. Light and dark. You don't see the color until you have light. Before I became dispatcher of my job, the dispatcher, you know, it's a blue house or it's a green house. We kept trying. It doesn't make no difference to us. The only thing we need is the number. Because at night, there is no color. Because the sun has looked upon me. So even when the sun comes upon You can be shown the light of the gospel and not receive it and still be dark. There are many people who have heard the gospel, have had the possibility of the gospel put in their hands, and are still in their wickedness and are still in their sin. Salvation is only by the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 33, uh, 33, 2 or 53, 2. My notes are getting smaller and smaller. Because the sun has looked upon light. Being burnt by the sun. Being tanned by the sun. Black also, as in we'll see in a minute. This is the, the color of the, of the skin of this woman. How do you know that? Let's read on. My mother's children. It doesn't say brother or sister. It says my mother's children. 6-9. When we get there. Were angry with me. Jump back to five. I skipped the whole thing. Because I am black. Verse five. And we'll say that she is black. But comely. Handsome. Beauty. Well. How can you be against black people 
and say you st you stand for the Christian in the Bible when this says I am black but but beautiful and handsome. How can you stand to be in a religion if you're black? You are of Satan or devil. How can you be part of a Pacific uh, sect where you know the black people? There is no hope in them at all. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, so this woman is talking to Jews. Solomon, Jesus Christ, has a Gentile bride, and I apologize for skipping five, missing five. As the tent of Kedar. You know about Kedar? You know they're black and Jewish? Genesis 25, 13, Psalms 120, verse 5. You know who Kedar is from? Ishmael. The son of Ishmael. Ishmael was Abram, the Hebrew, and I just lost the way. Hagar, the Egyptian, a Jewish African or an African Jew. I am black. As the curtains of Solomon from the outside. The Lord looketh on the heart. I am black, but come. Look not upon me, because I'm black. Isaiah 53 2. Some people look at a color of a skin. If you're Christ, you are Christ. If you are saved, whatever color you are, you're saved. We're not dealing with lost flesh. We're, talk, we're talking about saved, colored people. They are much in the bride of Christ as you are. And if you have a hatred for their race, their color, and you profess to be a Christian, you are a liar. Because the sun has looked upon me. Light shows who you are. My mother's children were angry with me back where we were before I skipped that verse. Has any of your family been mad at you because you you come to Christ? This is not the Jews being angry with her. This is her mother's children, her offspring, her brothers and sisters. Ishmael and Israel are at odds and at war even to this present day. What are you doing marrying that Jew? Do you know what happens to somebody that trusts Jesus Christ as their Savior who was once a Muslim? You are either disowned or killed. Go find a Muslim that has converted to Jesus Christ as his way, the truth, and the life, and, and ask him in a Middle Eastern country that he lives in what his life has become for Christ. They made me keeper of the vineyards, a servant. 
but my own vineyard have I not kept. That doesn't mean she, she gets to keep the vineyard. She's got to tend and work it, but she doesn't have her own. You know, Jesus said that there was a vineyard planted and then wine press, and represents the Jews. And those apostles went out in the book of Acts and preached to the Jews. And to Paul say, you know what? It's the Gentiles' time. And you know the Gentiles that are in Christ have been persecuted by Jews still today and by a church that proclaims to, or professes to be of J Jews. You know, if you go over to Jerusalem today, who will give you all the tours for the Christians? Not really the Jews. Some will. But primarily, there's one church over Jerusalem. So we don't have a vineyard. But we are grafted into the vine. And that vine is the Lord Jesus Christ. This world is not my home. How do you like that? Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, She's seeking out to the, to the Lord. Where thou feedest. Where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. She's calling out to the shepherd, John chapter 10. She's saying, where do you want me? Where am I supposed to eat? Where am I supposed to rest? She's seeking guidance and guide from the shepherd. Have you? For my for why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? She wants Solomon, but not his workers. She works for the real thing. It's almost like the story of Ruth. She's not content to be with the companions of the shepherd. She wants the shepherd. I'm not looking for the appearing of Paul, Timothy, uh, Titus, and Peter, James, and John. Even though when I'm raptured, I will be with them. I want Jesus. I will see Lester Roloff one day. I will see Bob Jones Sr. when they never met him. I will see the booths one day. Never met him. But I want to see Jesus. If thou knowest not, O thou fairest among women, Genesis 12, 11, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock and feed the kids Besides the shepherd tents. It's the, uh, the place of feasting. A church. Jesus told Peter, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. If the Lord hasn't come yet. Get yourself 
with a flock that is being fed beside the tents. A tent is a temporary dwelling place. I have compared thee, O oh my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots. 1 Kings 10.28 I don't know. I don't know what the horses of Pharaoh's chariots were, but they Solomon went for them. Strong, beauty, armor, military. But Jesus Christ, thy cheeks are comely with rolls of jewels. Thy neck with chains of gold. We will make thee borders of gold with studs of silver. While the king sitteth at his table, my spikenard, which is a perfume, sendeth forth the smell thereof. Mark 4 3 and John 12 3. It's an aromatic plant with purple flowers. It is found in the gospel. It's mine. Given to the king. A bundle of myrrh, again a perfume. As my well beloved unto me. Good smelling. He shall lie all night betwixt my breast. I try to look up the difference between betwixt and between. They're pretty much the same. Where John, the beloved apostle, was upon Jesus' breast. But well, here the Lord is upon our breath. My beloved. You know, he says in Proverbs, he says, he's talking to the man about his wife. Let thy breast satisfy thee at all times. That's not cruel. That's not disgusting. That's love. That's a marital love. You can cover your ears. My beloved is unto me as a cluster of campfire. It's not campfire, campfire. Again, a perfume in the vineyards of Engidai. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes. We'll see that in 4.1. Doves have a binocular vision field. Focus one single object at a time. Dark eyes. Behold, thou art fair. Oh, look at that. Three times. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, my beloved. Yay! Pleasant. Also our bed is green, vegetation, fruitful. Where sheep lie. Psalms 23. That's the lying place. That is the dwelling of Adam in the garden. The beans of our house are cedar and our rafters of fir. 1 Kings 6.15 Ornamental wood of, 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 of smell and of wood that is strong. Costly. The best. Nothing cheap here. 